How's it going guys? Coach JG here. Um, and there's pieces I wanted to go over today. Lots of pieces, so we're going to do an extended talk. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot. I still see. I've always seen, but I still see a lot of um, coaches that I really consider experts in the industry. Some of the best guys in the industry, actually. Um, spreading misinformation. Spreading misinformation, and you see, this is when it comes to plant-based uh, diets, when it comes to veganism. Um, and you see a lot of the who I consider the top guys in the world, who are, who do a lot of stuff research based, who do a lot of stuff research based, just spreading misinformation, getting stuff wrong, and I really think it comes from a bias. I really think it comes from a, this um, culture of carnism that we have, and cognitive dissonance, which I'll, I'll get into later. That's kind of a psychology piece. Um, so you know, I don't want to call people out here, but I'm going to drop names. Just to give context, um, and all, every name that I'm dropping here are people that I listen to and that I respect a ton. Uh, so the first one is Travis Mash. Travis Mash from uh, Mash Elite, one of the best uh, strength and conditioning coaches in the world, one of the best weightlifting coaches in the world. Um, and I'm listening to his podcast on uh, Barbell Shrugged. And Mash is talking about his kids, and he's talking about how they're eating. And he's talking about feeding his kid, feeding kids in general, but, you know, beef, uh, butter, milk. Beef, butter, milk. Um, you know, these are all foods that are very well researched. That are very well researched. And a lot of the research shows that, you know, this stuff's not very good for you. I've had talks with, um, you know, friends of mine, clients of mine, people within my network, women specifically, about the rates of the increased rates of breast cancer for women that consume, uh, I think it was two glasses a day, which which is a lot of milk. Don't get me wrong. I don't think many a ton of people are drinking that much milk. But if two glasses a day is increasing it, one glass one glass a day, I'm gonna guess is increasing in some capacity. So you know that's that's for cancer risk. When we talk about butter and beef, we're talking about um, beef is classified as a carcinogen classified as a carcinogen, cancer causing, uh, a cancer causing food, um, butter, we're talking about artery clogging, we're talking about our leading, one of our leading causes of death, heart disease, or two, heart disease and cancer. So, I mean, this stuff, and this is one of the smartest guys in the world, it's most, one of the most brilliant strength conditioning coaches in the world, telling people, eat beef, drink milk, eat butter. And, you know, I, I think we, we got to get away from that. I think as an industry, we got to get away from that. I love the plant-based movement that's coming. I love people who are just reducing their impact, however it is. So I always say, you know, veganism isn't for everybody. Uh, being 100% plant-based isn't for everybody. But I love people that are doing the shift, that are pulling some of the meat out of their diet, that are pulling dairy out of their diet. Um, you know, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to add research on here. Mike the Vegan is huge. In terms of numbers, you know, Paul statistics, Mike the Vegan here on YouTube, and um, Earthling Ed is great as well. Earthling Ed is absolutely great, and I just jumped onto the the guy uh, Plant Proof podcast, um, and he had a psychologist on who was talking brilliant stuff about car carnism and um, the cognitive dissonance associated with. It. So Travis Mash, you know, I was really disappointed to hear that because the guy is brilliant. The guy's brilliant, and you hear these brilliant guys that have been raised on, you know, eat meat, drink milk. Uh, when you want to gain muscle, they do the gallon of milk a day thing to gain muscle. And yeah, you're overflowing your body with calories, with protein, with fat. But, you know, the, the hormones that we have of drinking the, the milk of another animal is, uh, it, you know, it's clearly not meant for humans, and it has health complications for us. Um, another guy I really look up to in the CrossFit space, Ben Bergeron. He's one of the best CrossFit coaches in the world. And um, listening to his podcast, Chasing Excellence, everybody should tune into it. It's a brilliant podcast. I, I love hearing this guy talk. Absolutely brilliant. And more on the leadership stuff and the entrepreneurship stuff. Because the, the CrossFit um, training doesn't relate a lot to me and my clients and my athletes. But uh, Chasing, being excellent, amazing. Amazing to hear this guy talk. But, but he was talking, he had a, a, a Q&A, and he's talking to a teenager, and he tells the kid, just focus on protein. Just focus on protein. 
And he went back to the old adage of, of a gram of protein a day, which if you work in a strength or you've ever worked in a bodybuilding kind of space, we, we've always followed that. Or a lot of people have followed that. I shouldn't say we all. But there's so many um, nutrients that we need to get into our bodies that young kids, teenagers need to get into your bodies to tell a teenager, focus on protein, make sure you're eating your meat. Make sure you're eating your meat, focus on your protein. Make sure you're eating your eggs, focus on your protein. No. No. Yeah, get the protein in. Yeah, especially if you're trying to bulk up, you're playing a power sport, you're worried about your strength, get your protein up. But so many nutrients we need, we need to uh, get into our bodies. Vitamin D. So many people in our society are vitamin D deficient. Um, B12, so many people are deficient. And if you're, it's a huge thing within uh, in the vegan um, community to take a B12 supplement. There's not a lot of um, omnivores that are taking B12 supplements. Um, I have my son, he takes uh, algae oil to get omega-3s from a plant source, you know, for brain health. Um, getting, getting those fats to help your brain operate correctly. And again, we're cutting out the middlemen there. The people take fish oil to get their omega-3s, but the fish are eating the algae. So we can get that. We can also get that directly. Um, you know, we, we take filling your body with antioxidants. We do wheatgrass, we do a greens drink, um, you know, there's, we, we do vitamin C. There's just so many nutrients that you need to get in your body. Fiber is a huge one. T youth and teenagers, they're already finding, at, at ages as young as 12, they're already finding that, that children are starting to have um, blockages in their arteries, blockages in their arteries from the North American diet. So, you know, we, we got to move away from that. That is such an old adage, focus on your protein, uh, get this much protein. Don't get me wrong, again, protein is important, especially for strength athletes or for power athletes, but there are so many other nutrients you need to get into your body, more important, I would say, to get into your body. It, it's very rare that we have a uh, protein shortage. It's very rare that, we, that your body is suffering from not enough protein. That, that is extremely rare, in my opinion. So, you know, you, you got to, the thing I want is I, I want to hear more of these people speak uh, with evidence. I want to hear more of these guys speak the same. Travis Mass, if you ask him something about weightlifting, if you ask him something about, um, I, think, I would think most diet stuff that's not related to uh, eating plant-based or eating beef, you know, he's going to come at you with stats. He's going to come at you with stats. He's going to come at you with evidence. Um, but something like this, he... he, he a guy that brilliant is throwing out ridiculous, played out uh, old edges that are disproven. Vegans have, and I will put the research here and uh, link the research here for you guys, have higher, to, recorded higher testosterone in studies than omnivores. Um, vegan men, I, I don't know why, I don't think I've seen research on women yet. The vegan men have higher um, serum testosterone than non vegans. Right, you. Uh, I was today. I was watching Happy Healthy Vegan. Uh, a guy in his fifties, who has the available testosterone of a twenty-year-old, of a twenty-year-old. So, you know, you you need to to be big and strong. You need to have your beef. You need to have no, no. The, the science does say otherwise. The science does say otherwise, and that's even before we get into, you know eliminating your risk or significantly reducing your risk of cancer, significantly reducing your risk of heart disease. Why wait until you're in your 60s and your doctor tells you, hey, you know, Bobby, you're going to, you, uh, you have high blood pressure, you say you're recovering from a heart attack or you have this kind of cancer, you need to stop eating like what you're eating. We need you to, like, why wait until that point until you're told to change how you're eating or you're going to die? Um, you can change it now. Maybe you have the ability to change it now. And that could just be reducing it. That, that makes such a big impact to do, you know, to go plant-based for two days a week, three days a week, one day a week. It makes such a big impact on you and in your health and on the environment. It makes a huge impact. And then from a performance standpoint, we see some of the highest performing um, athletes in the world shifting a plant-based diet, shifting a vegan diet, even if it's temporary, um, during that time or in preparation for, to get the most they can out of their body. You see what Chris Paul's doing right now with Phoenix. 
went plant-based. You know, Kyrie's doing uh, for the last couple of years went uh, went plant-based. You see what Beyonce does when she does her prep for uh, Coachella, I think it is. So, you know, it, it's it's proven. You feel better. You feel lighter. You reduce inflammation in your body. It's it's proven. So so if I I respect it more for you know people to say omnivorous people to say you know what I'm this is always how I've been raised this is what I'm used to yeah I've seen the science yeah I've seen the proof but this is me right and I'm sure we can win some of those people over at some point but you know don't don't pretend otherwise don't pretend the facts are on your side because the facts are on your side the facts are on your side um, and then one more thing I want to say on that is you, you hear a lot of them t when they when they'll talk about the quality of uh, of beef specifically I think um, they'll talk about grass fed oh yeah get your grass fed blah blah, blah get your grass fed I don't know how grass fed is any better um, from a meat standpoint than grain fed I guess is the opposite so I haven't eaten meat in a long time so. I'm not down with the with the lingo. I think it's grass fed and grain fed, um, but I do know that grass fed takes tremendously more land and resources, so it's it is actually worse for the environment. You are actually yeah you're 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 hoping that you're getting the the company that's advertising towards you is telling you you're somehow getting some nutritional benefit, but the cow needed more uh, space. It needed more resources. It needed more resources to grow the grass, and it needed more water. So it's, it's much harder on the environment already um, than a grain-fed cow is. And I don't know if there is any true um, nutritional benefit other than them being able to tell you, uh, you know, grass-fed and charge you one and a half the price or double the price or whatever it is. So keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, the, on the animal... On the animal... Uh, cruelty piece the animals live just as terrible a life and the animals are killed and they don't want to get killed so grass fed you can say grass fed grass fed grass fed but that doesn't really change those things that doesn't really change those things so now I wanted to get into carnism uh, I think this is huge I think this is really important uh, me my approach is when I'm talking to people about veganism and plant-based eating you know is always been very educational so it's a very soft approach, and I'm happy to say that I've been able to influence a lot of my clients um, to, you know, make changes to their diet. Um, many of my clients come say, you know, Jordan, I'm eating less meat. You know, Jordan, I'm trying, I'm going vegetarian, you know, for a month. Jordan, I'm, try I'm trying veganuary. You know, Jordan, I'm like, I'm basically vegan. I eat meat very rarely. And I love hearing that because all I do is, you know, empower people with the information, um, answer questions and try to be a living example and provide other living examples of hey you know you can be big you can be strong you can be fast while eating plants you can excel you know and I feel better than ever my body feels better than ever than when I was in my teens and my twenties body in pain um, drinking milk eating meat my body's in pain back then my body's in pain comparably now I feel amazing but the issue with carnism is that I still uh, will speak to people from an honest standpoint. I really try my best to come to people from an honest standpoint. You know what I say, I can't protect people from the truth. Is, you know, these, from an animal cruelty piece, which I think, I think animal cruelty is the least resonating with a lot of people. You know what, I went vegan for the humans. I went vegan because I want to save the environment, preserve the environment for the next gen, for my son and for other kids and for the next generations to come. So I went vegan for the humans. Um, it's better for your health. That's a huge piece for a lot of people. And I think the least important piece for many people is the cruelty and um, what they call the animal holocaust that these animals go through. It, it is absolutely horrible. And, and that's a component that we call carnism. That we, we round it up, we kill. The statistic I, I heard uh, from a psychologist, I was listening to her on the Plant Proof Podcast, I'll put that in the link for you guys, um, where she said every day more animals are killed than all humans that have ever died in the history of war, which is insane, it's crazy. 
So it's just the, the level of violence is just crazy, right? But we've all been, we don't see it. We Many of us have been raised to ignore it and say, hey, this is just the way things are. And that's a cognitive dissonance when someone comes up to you and says, hey, like you're, this is what you're paying for. This is what you support with your dollars. And you can change. You can change. But the cognitive dissonance is, um, as she describes it, you people want to say, you know, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I'm a good person, I don't do bad things, I don't create bad things. This person's telling me what I'm doing is creating something bad, and nope, I'm not going to listen to you, you're bad, I'm not going to listen to you anymore, I'm not going to listen, I'm not going to listen. So, you know, I've had, actually had those issues, and, I, and I'm trying to find out, like, what is it I said that offended you? Like, what is it, well, you said that, like, animals get killed. You said that animals get killed, and, like, that offends people. Sorry, sorry. Um, it 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 is just crazy. It is just crazy. So you're you're being faced with something that you're you've learned the opposite, right? You you've learned about your whole life, and you're being faced with the opposite. And and I'll say, for omnivorous people, just start off with being a vegan ally. That's it. Just start off with being a vegan ally. Just start off by listening. And do your own research, please do your own research, especially on the health benefits, especially on the health benefits. So many people could make such big changes in their life um, just by reducing the, the garbage that they put in their bodies. You, you, anybody who you show them a, a nice plate of vegetables and salad and whatever it is, and you put them like a big old pile of whatever it is, roast beef, might smell delicious. But, like, you could look at the two plates and you know, in deep down inside you, you know which one's better for you. You know which one's better for you. I, I, get, I go crazy when I see these guys telling people to do, the, do the, uh, the carnivore diet. Because at the end of the day, like, that's going to kill people. People, if you, if you don't get enough vitamin C, which is not in meat, you get scurvy and you die. If you... <laughs> Um, are, are getting your arteries clogged from the cholesterol and the meat that you're eating like you you're gonna get at some point you get heart disease you're gonna heart attack you're gonna die so you know we can change we, we can change so much um, based on what we're taking into our bodies and you know a, a better quality of life a longer life a healthier planet I, I hope a lot of, as many people that are watching this want a healthier planet um, and save some animals in the process. Save these animals from, you know, terrible stuff that goes on. And I want to make one more point on carnism is, is uh, she talks about the dichotomy between the animals we choose that are worthy of death, worthy of torture and death and being eaten, and the animals that are not. And she gave the example of if you, to if you made a delicious soup for somebody and you told them, oh, like it's golden retriever. And oh, like, what? Right, but if you told them, you know, it's pork, it's pork soup. Oh wow, this is pretty good. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. It's all, it's a lot of uh, programming. It's a lot of programming to overcome. Uh, but I want to see the top guys in the world, especially the guys that, that uh, you know, I consider the best, the guys that I look up to in the industry. I want to see them talk evidence based. I want to hear you talk evidence based when it comes to veganism and plant based eating and nutrition. Please bring the evidence. Please bring the evidence. Um, and, uh, we, we will, you know, that, that'll help shift, shift, um, shift the discussion because there's no real evidence-based argument against veganism. My coach, uh, Clint Darden, he'll, he'll talk about it and, you know, he's, he'll, he'll be a guy that can overcome some uh, cognitive dissonance, but he will say, you know, in, in strength sports, we have to be maximally big and maximally strong, which you know, meat, which is not for health. You ain't competing for health if you're doing a strongman championship or a powerlifting championship and you're 300 plus pounds. He's like, you know what? You have, he, he believes you have to. And and you know what? He's probably right that you that it is easier to eat those calorie dense foods and get bigger. But I, w I would love to see, uh, you know, a vegan strongman step up and, and prove people wrong. Um, and in other sports, we have proved a ton of people wrong. The greatest weightlifter, the greatest American weightlifter, Kendrick Ferris. It on a vegan diet, which is the real games on a vegan diet. Um, so you know the, the the examples are there, but you know come at come at us with that evidence. Please come with that evidence and help elevate uh, the industry. Um,
And, you know, check that carnism. Check that carnism at the door. Or at least acknowledge the carnism. Acknowledge the carnism. I'll see you guys later. Veg Athletics.